In this section, I'm going to be talking about the idea of continuity. So we have an um, intuitive idea of continuity already, the idea that a function is continuous if I can draw it without ever lifting up my pencil. So we see that um, this first graph here is continuous because I can draw it by touching my pencil down and reaching the end without ever lifting it up. So this function is clearly continuous. Well, the second function here is clearly not continuous because I see that there are some breaks in the function. So I see that my function is not continuous here and here because of these two different breaks, places where I'd have to lift up my pencil. So let's look at another example that sort of illustrates why we might need a more precise definition of continuity. So here I've got um, a piecewise function where h of x is equal to x sine 1 over x if x is not 0 and 0 if x is equal to 0. So by just looking at the picture here, I can't tell if um, my function is continuous at 0. So we need a more precise definition of what it means for a function to be continuous at a particular value. So the uh, definition of continuity relies on our um, limits that we've been working with. So it's a particular application of limits. So our definition says that a function f is continuous at a if um, the limit as x goes to a of f of x is equal to f of a. Okay, so we have this limit definition of continuity. If f is not continuous in, at um, the point a, then we say a is a point of discontinuity. Okay, so this definition here of continuity actually implies that a couple of different things have to be true. So these things that we check, we're going to call our continuity checklist. So for f to be continuous at a, we must have the following three conditions. First, we need f of a to be defined. So we to be able to write down this f of a here, we need um, a to be in the domain of f. We need the limit as x goes to a of f to exist. So in other words, we need it to not be plus or minus infinity. And we also need um, the right-hand limit to be equal to the left-hand limit as we approach a for the limit to exist. And lastly, we need that limit that exists to be equal to f of a, to the value of f of a. So that last one is the, the definition, and those first two are some things that are implied by that, that definition, that that right-hand side f of a has to exist, be defined as some number, and that left-hand side has to exist. Okay, so a couple things that this also um, tells us. It tells us that if we've got a con continuous function, we can use direct substitution to evaluate the limit. So anytime you've got a continuous function, you're going to be able to use um, direct substitution to apply the limit as x goes to a of f of x and see that it's equal to f of a. Um, and when we talk about where a function is discontinuous, we say it's discontinuous at a point if it's not continuous at the point, meaning that one of these three conditions fails. Either f of a is not defined, the limit doesn't exist, or maybe the limit exists and f of a is defined, but they're not actually equal to each other. Okay, so let's take a look at this in the context of an example. So we've got a graph here where we're going to be interested in identifying the places where the function is not continuous. And then we're going to make use of these various terms here to describe the type of discontinuity. So if we look at this graph, we see the first place that our function is not continuous is at 2. Okay, so what's going on there? Why is it not continuous? Which part of the definition um, or of that continuity checklist fails. Well, we see that f of 2 is defined. Okay, it's defined to be 2, so it's not that part. So what about the limit as x goes to 2? Well, we see that the limit as x goes to 2 of this function doesn't exist since the limit as x goes to 2 from the left is not equal to the limit as x goes to 2 from the right of f. Because we see as we approach 2 from the right, we're approaching 4. And as we approach 2 from the left, we're approaching 2. Okay. So when we have this type of um, behavior, we call this a jump discontinuity. 
place because we're jumping there from 2 to 4. Okay, the next place where we're not continuous is at 3, at x equals 3. And we see that this is because um, f of 3 is not defined. Okay, 3 is not in the domain of the function. The type of discontinuity that we have here is an infinite discontinuity. Since as I approach 3, I'm approaching negative infinity. Um, I would also have an infinite discontinuity if perhaps um, as I approached 3 from the right I went to positive infinity and as I approached 3 from the left I went to negative infinity. So basically where I'm going to have um, a vertical asymptote, I'm going to have an um, infinite discontinuity type. Okay. So the last place where this function is um, discontinuous is at 4. So at x equals 4 I'm discontinuous, so let's see why. Well it's defined at 4. It also looks like the limit as I approach 4 exists because from both sides I'm approaching 4, but the issue here is that the limit as x goes to 4 of f is 4, but f of 4 is equal to 2. So it fails that last um, piece of the continuity checklist. When we have this type of discontinuity occurring, we call that a removable discontinuity. Okay, so let's look at um, another example. So here we're interested in determining whether the function is continuous at negative 2 and we want to try to use the continuity checklist to help us justify our answer. So now instead of being given a graph, I'm given this um, function here defined algebraically. So I'm going to go through and think about my continuity checklist. So first I'm going to think about is um, my function defined at the value. So f of negative 2 equals 1, so it is defined. So what about the next piece? Well, the next piece involves me considering the limit as x approaches negative 2 of my function. Well, if I'm approaching negative 2, that means I'm not necessarily um, at negative 2, so I can consider the piece of the function where x is not equal to negative 2. So I can be considering the limit as x goes to negative 2 of 1 over x plus 2. Now I see that this is a situation where if I plugged in negative 2, I'd get 0 on the, the denominator. So I'm going to end up with, because I have a number in the numerator, either a limit of positive or negative infinity. When I try to figure out which one of those it's going to be, I notice that the sign of this denominator depends on whether I'm approaching negative 2 from the left or from the right. So first I think about what's happening as I approach negative 2 from the left. As I approach negative 2 from the left, I'm going to have something that's um, a little bit more negative here. So I'm going to have a small negative number. So I'm going to be approaching negative infinity. If I look at the limit as x goes to negative 2 from the right, I'm going to be plugging in something a little bit bigger than negative 2. So I'm going to have a small positive number here in the denominator, so I'm going to be equal to positive infinity. So this limit does not exist, and we say we've got an infinite discontinuity um, at um, a equals negative 2. Okay. Now we don't always have to label the um, type of discontinuity, we're just doing that for practice. Here we really just needed to answer the question um, is this function continuous at negative 2 and y? So we can say no, and it's because um, the limit as we approach negative 2 of this function does not exist. Okay. So let's look at continuity on an interval next. So, so far we've been talking about continuity at a point. We often also want to be talking about continuity um, on an interval for a function, or to find the intervals where a function is continuous. So we say that a function is continuous on an interval if it's continuous at every point in that interval. And because sometimes we're going to have um, intervals that have um, endpoints, and our function might only be defined on one side, we're going to say that f, if f is defined on only one side of an endpoint, we're going to understand continuity at the endpoint to mean continuous from the right or continuous from the left. So these ideas of continuity from the right and continuity from the left are connected to ideas of left and right limits. 
So here's a definition for us. A function f is going to be continuous from the left at a if the limit as we approach a from the left of our function is equal to the value of the function at a. And we're going to be continuous from the right if as we approach um, a from the right, the value of our function is approaching um, f of a, is equal to f of a. Okay, so let's just get a little picture of what this um, looks like. So for the limit as I approach a from the left is equal to a, I have something that looks like, like this. So there's a and this is f of a. So right here I'm, I see that the limit as x approaches a from the left of the function is equal to f of a. So that's a situation where I have left continuity. When I have right continuity, I have something that looks like this. So I've got a here, this is f of a. So I see that the limit as x goes to a from the right of f is equal to f of a. And to think about this in a particular example, you could think of something like y equals root x, okay? And we know that this function is only defined for x greater than or equal to zero, so it only makes sense to talk about um, right continuity at zero. So this function is right continuous at zero, since the limit as x approaches zero from the right of root x is equal to um, the value of that function at zero. Okay, so let's get some practice with this in an example. So uh, from this graph, I want to determine the intervals on which my function f is continuous. So I see I've got some places, some points where it's not continuous, so I'm going to have to exclude those from the interval. But um, I also want to um, consider things like right and left continuity. So I start by looking at this first interval piece from 0 to 1, and I see that the function is right continuous at 1 because as I approach, excuse me, right continuous at 0, because as I approach 0, I'm approaching a value of 1, which is also equal to the value of the function at 0. So when I list my interval, first interval of continuity, it's from 0 to 1, not including 1 meaning I'm right continuous at 0, um, not continuous at 1. The next interval over which my, my function is continuous is from 1 to 2, not including that endpoint of 2 because I'm not left continuous at 2. My next interval is from 2 to 3, where I want to include 2 and not include 3 because I am right continuous at 2, because as I approach um, 2 from the right, I am approaching the value of the function at 2. And then my last interval of continuity is from 3 to 5, where I have um, that endpoint of 5 being included in the interval because my function is left continuous at 5. Um, when we're writing down the intervals over which our function f is continuous, we're going to list them with commas. Okay, so that gives us an idea of um, interval continuity. There's just um, maybe one other fact we want to mention and then get a chance to practice. So we have all of these, um, these definitions of, um, of continuity, continuity at a point, continuity on intervals, but in practice it's going to be really useful to have some rules um, that allow us to more easily tell what functions are continuous without always having to use um, limits. So we have these nice properties that tell us that if we have um, two functions, f and g, that are both continuous at a, then we could prove that the following combinations of those functions would also be continuous at a. Um, so if we know f and g are continuous at a, then the sum of f and g will be continuous at a. Um, the difference of f and g will be continuous at a. A constant times f will be continuous at a. A product will be continuous at a, quotient of those two things, as long as um, the denominator at a is not zero, as well as even taking um, f and raising it to a power will also be continuous. Okay, so this, these are some nice facts for us to know. The last important fact here, which we'll use quite frequently, is that polynomials are always continuous. 
Okay, polynomials are continuous for all x. So anytime we look at something and we recognize it's a polynomial, we know it's continuous for all real numbers. The other type of common function that we'll often see is, is a rational function. This is where we've got a polynomial divided by a polynomial. And that kind of function will be continuous um, for all x where the denominator is not zero. In other words, we can think about the function as being continuous on um, all values where it's defined, continuous on its domain. Excuse me. So we just want to practice using um, these facts in one example. So in this example, I've got the function f of x equals x squared over x squared plus 2x minus 15. And I want to find the intervals um, on which this function is continuous. I notice that this function is a rational function because it's got a polynomial x squared divided by a polynomial x squared plus 2x minus 15. So it's going to be continuous on its domain. So I need to just figure out the domain of this function. And I know the domain of um, a rational function like this is going to be all values except where the denominator is 0. So I need to exclude x where x squared plus 2x minus 15 would be equal to 0. So I just need to solve that for um, 0 here. Let's see, I want it to be x plus 5 times x minus 3 equals 0. So I see that at negative 5 and 3, um, my denominator would be 0. So I need to exclude those from the domain. So my function f is continuous on the following intervals. It's continuous from negative infinity to negative 5, not including negative 5. It's continuous from negative 5 to 3, not including 3. And it's continuous from 3 to infinity. OK, so that ends um, the lecture on this topic. We're going to be talking more about um, continuity and some other properties to, um, that involve continuity, as well as some theorems, in class next week. Let me know if you have any questions.